I invite to join this virtual stage those members of the Stimulating Demand for Energy Efficiency Investments Working Group and those members of the Monitoring Data on Energy Efficiency Investments and Financing. So those uh, panelist members are uh, Josephine Maguire, who is the National Coordinator um, for the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. They are Luca Bertolot, who is the Secretary General of the European Mortgage Federation. Uh, they are Deborah Revolta, Revoltella, sorry, who is the Chief <laughs> Econom Economist at the EIB, and Vesna Bukarica, who is the Senior Researcher at the Croatian Energy Institute. So uh, each one of you, we have uh, less time for you um, because this is four people on a panel and uh, we just had two in the other ones. But um, I think what we've decided is we'll take opening remarks for five minutes from each of you um, and we'll do it in the order in which I have introduced you. So that would be starting off with uh, Josephine. Thanks very much, Peter. Uh, so just as, as Peter said, I'm Josephine McGuire. I'm from SEAI. We're the National Sustainable Energy Authority in Ireland. Um, just the background to, to what I'm going to present in Ireland, um, government have set out a policy that almost a third of our homes need to be upgraded to a B2 energy rating by 2030. About uh, a quarter of our homes need to have been upgraded to have uh, a renewable heating system at the moment that the focus is on heat pumps uh, by 2030 as well. And, and obviously that goes on right out to 2050. Um, so I might just uh, move on on the basis of that to my first slide, if that's OK. And that's really just to talk about, I think it's it's really to talk about the consumer demand generation. And and really, this resonates very much with, with the findings of EFIG in their reports lately and, and in the um, the Joint Research Centre of the European Commission, who have done a, a great report on mobilising citizens. So. Um, in Ireland, we've looked at this over many years. So this is the consumer decision making framework that we have come up with. And you can see down on the right, it's informed by all those types of research that we've done. But essentially on the left hand side, we're saying, look, here are the number of consumers with, with energy saving potential. And then you say, well, well, who's aware and engaged and, and that speaks back to the information side of things. So ha what sort of information instruments have, have you got? Well, you've got your, your building energy rating, you call it an EPC, Energy Performance Certificate. Um, so can you use that? And we're using that to, to go further and do what we call a home energy assessment uh, for a home. And, and that incorporates the, the building energy rating, but goes further and says, well, well, what do you need to make your home, say, heat pump ready? What sort of a, a heat loss indicator would you need to have? And what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of, of of redesigning your heating system or looking at the fabric of your home. Um, we also look at, at how do you get consumers aware and engage? Well, we are starting off a consumer based social marketing campaign at the moment where we're working locally as, as well as nationally on campaigns to, to inform. Um, and then we move on to the, the, the next one, and then consumers making a decision in a given year. Well, well, how do you target those sort of consumers? Um, well, look, what are consumers doing? They're, they're, they're buying homes and then they're secondhand homes and they need to renovate them. So that's the wider renovation. And you're saying, well, well, have you thought about the energy efficiency re renovation while you're doing this? Because this is the time to do it. And it's working with, with mortgage advisors, with banks, uh, with architects around that sort of engagement. There are also other trigger points. There are trigger points where maybe somebody's retiring and, and you know, what might they use their lump sum on because they're going to spend a lot more time at home. Um, then once you get the consumer at, at the sort of those trigger points, then you're saying, OK, well, here's all our advice. Uh, it's the right time to do it. And now the consumer looks at the cost of it and says, well, well, I don't have the finance. So it's looking at then how do you bring low cost finance and how do you you partner up so that uh, it's easy for them to, to get that low cost finance rather than going off separately, trying to find it. And then after that, it's it's how do you incentivize them? How do you have the grants promoting uh, deeper packages so that it's worth their while to do that extra investment and go deeper? Um, and how do you convince them around all of that? So um, just with that, I might move on, on to the next slide, uh, if that's OK. And uh, that next slide is around uh, the one stop shop. And really, this is one of the answers we've come up with in SEAI, which we've just launched earlier this year, and it is a one stop shop service. Now, in Ireland, 
what that means is uh, an entity will register with SEAI and there is a, a registration process with us as a one stop shop and, and thereafter what they will do is they are uh, involved in creating awareness and capturing consumers attention um, they're involved in doing assessments and quotations for the consumer so tailored advice undertaking a home visit sitting down with the homeowner listening to them and what they want giving them quotes for the proposed work uh, also letting them know what finance is available in the market as information and, and maybe being linked up to finance partners and then um, talking to the consumer and once the consumer has made a, a purchasing decision and, and signed a contract with them then they organize everything this the consumer only deals with this one-stop shop they don't know who the installer of the external wall insulation is or the heat pump installer, they're not interested in that. The one-stop shop organizes all of that, makes sure it's quality assured works, project manages everything, deals with SEAI for any grant drawdown uh, and governance. And then they guarantee uh, the quality of the work completion. Um, they only charge the consumer net of the cost of the grant. So, so if an upgrade was costing 40,000 and there was 20,000 in grants, they will only charge the consumer the net cost of 20,000. So really what we're trying to do is make this easier for the consumer, take the hassle away and create that, that virtuous circle for them. And uh, that's it for me, nice and quick. That's brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Josephine, for those introductory works. I really know that uh, Ireland is doing a great job and I noticed some of the, in the renovation plan, some of the uh, strong public support that also people have for doing deep renovation, which I, uh, I think is a great uh, initiative. But yeah, uh, we were, further... just to say, we were very involved with, with both the supply side and uh, consumers on that co-creation to make sure the design we had fitted on both sides. Brilliant. Thank you for that. So uh, without further ado, um, the next speaker I have in my lineup is Luca Bertolot uh, from the U European Mortgage Federation. Luca. Good morning, Peter, and good morning to everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. I will be speaking about our initiative of building a real ecosystem around the Energy Efficiency Mortgage Label Initiative. Um, in the last years, we are trying to align interest of uh, uh, mortgage lenders around the concept of energy efficiency. We look at how it was possible to create a European benchmark for consumer where they could easily identify the financial product which can help them in doing energy retrofitting. We try to link the retail strategies of the banks together with the funding strategies of, of the banks. In the last months, we have uh, uh, more than 70 banks in the Energy Efficiency Mortgage Initiative, and uh, more than 50 of them are entering and they are already on the Energy Efficiency Mortgage label. In the last year, we had reached 40 billion of uh, cover bond, ESG cover bonds done with energy efficiency uh, asset. This is a massive uh, a move for the market, and we are trying to lead major best practices changes in terms of disclosures, risk compliance uh, practices, and so on. But we think it is not enough. It's not enough because we realize that, I mean, problems are not only in the banking system. We need to move the energy efficiency best practices outside of the, of the banking sector. So with this idea in mind, we are trying to build an ecosystem around energy efficiency mortgage label. We are testing these pilots in uh, Trento, a, a small province of Italy, and in, the, in Scotland, uh, um, in Glasgow specifically, where we try to put together consumer needs together with uh, lenders' capacity and investor needs. What we try to do is uh, simply provide consumer with a, a simulator where they can actually test in their house the improvements, the retrofitting they would like to do, and trying to see what will be the impact on two very important variables, which is the energy bill. So see what will be the energy uh, savings that we, they will have in their own house, and also what will be the impact on the energy uh, property. We are using AVM to show and give a proxy to consumer of what will be the impact of retrofitting of, in these two variables. Well, we think that energy uh, inflation is bringing on the table of all the European families the discussion what we do with our energy bill. What we discover is that moving up two notches 
the energy efficiency level of their of our, my house, your house, Peter, could actually bring us a concrete saving of 70% of the energy expenses in the house. This is very important for all of us, but it is very, very important for people at the borderline of being, being able to pay the monthly installment or not. So it's really becoming a financial stability story where the disposable income of families is at risk and we think that energy efficiency is not only a solution for reducing energy consumption, but is also a solution to keep the most fragile part of our society in the game of the financial sector. Uh, because we, we should not forget that probably inflation will bring a higher interest rate and families can could be explore, uh, exposed to serious risk in terms of uh, uh, um, financial capacity to reimburse their loans. Another very important discovery that we have done, Peter, is that uh, energy efficiency mortgages are a very important part of the story, but consumers are not looking only for mortgages. They are looking for financial loans. So personal finance is playing in a very important uh, uh, game in this, uh, in this story. And we are trying to put together next to mortgages also uh, personal finance because the average financing that is required by families is around 30k 30 50k this is more a personal finance amount than a mortgage uh, uh, um, uh, reality we are also trying to bring together mortgage brokers so for example we are involving mortgage platform where normally consumer they used to check their prices for their mortgages uh, big platform are involved in this discussion and uh, we hope that we will be able to build a new ecosystem, uh, bring a revolution into the market. We need to change the paradigm. We need to put together and align interests of consumer, lenders and investors. Peter, I would like to stop here. Maybe if you have any question, I'm happy to, to integrate my intervention. But as a moderator, I would like to give you back the floor and decide how to manage this time in the most efficient way. Thank you, Luca, ever the efficient. And you and your energy efficiency mortgage platform and your EMI initiative have been working with financial institutions now for, I think, over five years. And clearly what you've described is definitely the right extension of those uh, initiatives. I'd encourage those of you who want to ask questions to Luca to write that in the chat and we'll come at the end of the series of presentations to those uh, questions. But next up um, on the, uh, the panel um, is, one second, uh, Deborah from the EIB. Yes, uh, hello, and thank you very much for uh, having me in the panel. I, I'm Deborah Revoltella, the Chief Economist of the European Investment Bank. But I, I have been asked, despite the EIB is uh, the EU bank and the climate bank, and we are uh, the first international institution to be fully Paris aligned, I, I'm not going to talk about uh, the transformation of process of uh, the European Investment Bank and also operationally. I know that other colleagues will do it uh, later on uh, tomorrow in the conference. But uh, what I have been asked to talk about is uh, specifically about uh, one project that uh, we developed to develop some data for having a better understanding of energy efficiency investment at the corporate level in Europe and with a benchmark in the US and in UK. This is a project that we launched already six, year, six years ago. It's an annual survey of European firms. Every year we interview 13,000 firms, as I was saying, in every European member state in the UK and US as a benchmark. The survey was developed to understand um, the full context of investment activities for firms. It's developed to be representative for each and every country for a four sector of activities, manufacturing services, construction and infrastructure. And then for firms above five employee divided in four classes, micro, small, medium and large firms. And the survey is, uh, um, is also, it's not only a survey, it's also linked to balance sheet information of the firms. So on uh, overall investment activities, uh, we have a combination of uh, um, hard data and survey data that uh, uh, allow us uh, to test uh, the real reliability of uh, the overall picture that uh, we get uh, from, uh, from uh, these uh, survey results. 
Um, since at the beginning of the survey, we added a specific question on energy efficiency. In particular, we are asking firms what's the proportion of your investment that was dedicated, that is a primary dedicated to energy efficiency. In this way, we have a, a picture of uh, um, two things, basically, on the percentage of firms that uh, say that uh, they do at least uh, more than 1%, so that they do some energy efficiency investment. And then uh, we have also a possibility to, um, actually, the firms uh, tell us uh, directly the percentage of their investment uh, that is uh, dedicated to energy efficiency. Um, also, the survey is representative by country, by sector, and type of firms. So we have a good view of the data for all these categories at the uh, country uh, level. And, uh, um, and this uh, looks very, uh, so in our analysis, uh, we saw over time uh, there is uh, quite uh, some consistency in the, in the results. And uh, we are uh, quite confident uh, that we get a good picture uh, of uh, energy efficiency investment uh, at uh, the firm level. We have uh, um, also uh, other than energy efficiency and uh, re reconnecting uh, to the previous uh, uh, intervention, we always uh, were asking another question uh, that is uh, whether firms implemented uh, uh, an energy audit. One of the things that we find in our analysis is uh, that uh, Having an energy audit is the best predictor in the future for firms investing in energy efficiency. And the reason is, we did a few studies related to that, is that most of the time, actually, the energy audit is showing to the firms that the investment, the investment for energy efficiency would quickly repay. So uh, there is a strong link between uh, the energy, energy audit and the decision uh, to advance in terms of, uh, of energy efficiency. Um, I was talking about our survey. Uh, we are now in the field for the next round. We, um, we usually start in April, finish in July. Um, and it's a, an ongoing instrument uh, that it's available. And we always uh, publish uh, the results. Um, uh, we publish uh, the results uh, so they are uh, available in our internet site for those uh, that are interested. They could uh, put in the chat uh, the link. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deborah. Um, and finally, now we will turn the floor to Vesna. Thank you very much, Peter, and thanks for inviting me to, to uh, briefly uh, present uh, experiences from Croatia. Uh, so, um, uh, I will just briefly introduce you uh, with uh, how we stimulate uh, um, demand for, for energy efficiency investments in Croatia, and that's dominantly through grants. Uh, and if I may have a next, uh, next slide. Uh, our energy efficiency uh, policy is really uh, focused on uh, on uh, buildings. So uh, all the time uh, speaking today is related uh, actually to our uh, our uh, programs for energy renovation of buildings, which is uh, understandable since in Croatia it really is uh, more than forty percent of final energy uh, final energy consumption in 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 uh, buildings. Uh, so on the next slide uh, we can see uh, the um, if I can have. A, Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, um, sorry. This is just about our institute. We are public institute and helping uh, he helping our authorities in in uh, um, uh, defining these programs, but uh, also in uh, evaluation of impacts of these programs, which le leads us to uh, data issues on uh, energy efficiency uh, investments. So, as I said, uh, and um, as shown in next slide, please. Uh, we, uh, complete, uh, we completely based our energy uh, efficiency policy in previous period on grants. These grants uh, were uh, awarded for uh, different types of buildings and from different sources, uh, uh, meaning uh, from uh, national sources, from energy efficiency fund, or from uh, EU sources, uh, meaning uh, European uh, uh, structural and uh, investment funds. And uh, as you may see, 
the uh, grant rates in Croatia are really high. Uh, they are they, they are they are uh, uh, extremely high, uh, but uh, an actual. Uh, periods of repayment of energy efficiency uh, of uh, energy renovation projects in Croatia are around 20 years. So uh, it's a kind of under, uh, understandable why, why we started with uh, this kind, uh, uh, this uh, uh, really high uh, grant uh, uh, rates. Uh, we uh, may say that we put a lot of time and effort and money uh, into energy uh, renovation of uh, buildings, uh, as you can see uh, here. And just for you to, to get an impression, we are a country of uh, below uh, 4 million people, so a really, really small market. Uh, so uh, these numbers are huge, uh, huge for us, uh, but still uh, with uh, these uh, efforts, both administrative uh, and financial, uh, we managed to achieve uh, in the last period renovation rate of uh, only 0.7%. Uh, so according to our uh, energy uh, long-term renovation strategy, we need to, to, to uh, uh, increase gradually this renovation uh, rate until 3% in 2030 and uh, maintain this renovation rate until 2050. And this will be a huge uh, challenge, uh, not only financially, but operationally, uh, uh, operationally uh, as well. And uh, this uh, uh, leads us uh, to the uh, next uh, uh, slide, uh, which uh, uh, actually uh, is uh, thinking about uh, data and thinking about uh, uh, future of our energy renovation program and energy efficiency investments in, uh, in general. Uh, when you have grant-based policies, uh, then it's uh, uh, relatively easy to collect the data uh, that you need for your uh, analysis and for communicating the impacts of energy efficiency. Uh, but uh, it's not that that easy to uh, to uh, collect all data that you, as an analyst, would like to uh, uh, would like to uh, have because you always need to make a trade-off because uh, between complexity of administrative burden to 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 your your users to your clients and uh, and the the uh, amount of data that you are collecting but i may say that in grant based policies uh, you can easily obtain square meters you can easily uh, obtain uh, kilowatt hours uh, per square meter kilowatt hours per per uh, uh, saved per square meter and in total and uh, um, these all data uh, can uh, be used for, for uh, uh, putting energy efficiency uh, on investments on, uh, on the agenda and scale, uh, scaling up and proving benefits. However, uh, there, are, uh, there are many other uh, benefits from energy efficiency that uh, lead uh, to decision on investments as shown in, uh, in uh, Ireland. And uh, for that, uh, for that uh, to, to be proof based, we uh, need uh, more data which uh, are uh, uh, not actually uh, collected. What is also uh, why these data are uh, also uh, needed uh, is uh, because we obviously need to turn transform uh, this grant-based policies uh, into more market-based policies, uh, policies which will be self-sustainable and which will actually lead to uh, let's call it self-induced uh, activities uh, and uh, energy efficiency uh, energy efficiency uh, investments. Uh, so this is one uh, on one hand. On the other uh, hand, uh, as a um, um, country, as a state that needs to uh, uh, deliver uh, certain uh, certain savings according to energy efficiency directive and and uh, other uh, obligations, uh, uh, because of grant based policies, we are not actually uh, capturing anything that is that is uh, uh, that has been done beyond the grants or and i dare even to say that we are not doing anything until we get get the 
uh, the uh, the grants. So uh, the point uh, the point is uh, that uh, uh, we need uh, uh, to start transitioning from uh, this kind of uh, uh, situation uh, into a, a more uh, more 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 uh, self uh, uh, self implement implementing energy efficiency uh, investments, and then we get the the problem how how actually to uh, monitor them and who will uh, who will actually provide the data for the country to report on uh, this uh, this uh, savings. So I uh, just wanted to, to point out a lot of challenges, uh, very few answers, but uh, we're working on it. And thanks for working group uh, uh, here. Uh, I think we will have uh, good recommendations how, how to proceed. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Vesna. Um, as you've all been speaking, a number of questions have come in. Uh, thank you to, to the audience for that. Um, so uh, I'll probably ask them in the order in which they've come and in the order in which you've spoken. Um, so the first is to uh, uh, Josephine. Um, so uh, can the Sustainable Energy uh, uh, Institute of Ireland uh, and your one-stop shops cope with the millions of renovations that are in the renovation strategy? And how do banks help you do that? And then there's a second question to you, which says, um, how uh, how do we envisage demand generation working in the context of the one-stop shop construct? So I think that means um, how do you how do the one-stop shops ensure the quality of home upgrades? Sure. Um, so the first one uh, was um, the millions of uh, upgrades. Well, in Ireland we have less than two million homes, uh, and uh, government have been very clear uh, on what the targets are. So uh, by 2030, 500,000 homes need to be upgraded to B2 and beyond, and 400,000 heat pumps need to be installed. So just to to temper it like that, but. Um, uh, I agree that, that that's quite a, a high target. At the moment, we have, uh, I think, about 4,000 people working in the home energy renovation sector. We have an expert group on future skill needs, and they have assessed this. They said we need to move through the decade from 4,000 to about quadruple it, to about 16,000, 17,000. Uh, but that expert group is together. That that comprises, we've got 16 um, local education and training boards. We've got SOLIS, which is the state agency for further education. We've got institutes of technology. We've got the, con um, the, the Construction Industry Federation, and we've got various government departments involved in, in looking at how we do that. So look, looking at new um, skills and training courses, looking at apprenticeships, looking at all of those things. Um, also, we, we register contractors uh, with SEAI and, and part of the one stop shop is actually to grow that construct contractor base because, for instance, you've got loads of plumbers in Ireland, but not that many heat pump installers. But really, that's a four to six week course to get a good plumber to be a heat pump installer. So it, it's all possible. It needs a little bit of work. It needs a bit of focus and targeting, but those groups are there. Um, the second thing is is about uh, I think was the banks really you were you were talking about Peter so uh, quite a number of banks are interested in this space in Ireland um, we do have green mortgages there um, there are a couple of of percent or percentage points below what the normal mortgages would be focusing on that A and B space there are also um, personal green loans uh, available for home energy upgrades uh, and it's no secret that government are also looking at this space and how can they um, I suppose look at de-risking a, a bit like Jonathan spoke about later how, how can the public sector come in and help de-risk that so there are conversations going on and I would say watch that space for the end of this year. Thank you. Uh, Luca to you. So uh, the question is how do your banks convert old existing mortgages into green mortgages, um, maybe by offering um, extra funds for deep EU taxonomy compliant renovations. Thank you for the question. Uh, um, we are trying to make a mechanism where actually all the banks will have a strong interest to go back to consumer and to propose a new financing solution. Um, banks are doing now a huge redemption uh, exercise to look for EPC information. Uh, allow me to say that only 10% of the more of the real estate 
uh, has an, an EPC. So uh, there is a 90% of uh, darkness that we have to transform in light. Uh, and the retrofitting is a fantastic opportunity. So that's why we are creating a, a mechanism where the bank has all the interest to propose the best financial solution for the consumer and get three information for free. It's the EPC information should be for free for the consumer and for the bank. And the consumer should give the authorization to use the EPC information because we have a huge GDPR problem, uh, Peter, you know better than me. Um, and then secondly, we are asking uh, uh, the company doing the works to have an ESG rating. So we are not only making green in the portfolio, but we want to in time green also the SME portfolio. It's a cathartic operation that we are trying to do. Retrofitting is the biggest opportunity to make working. Uh, it's not new lending, the new mortgages. It's the retrofitting sector is the biggest opportunity. Some of the banks are putting in place this mechanism, this cathartic mechanism. We, we still have to put uh, the, the mechanism in place in some countries, but I mean, that's the idea. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Luca. Yes. Um, and of course, uh, we look forward to um, these mechanisms, of course, being documented in the work of the energy efficiency um, stimulating demands uh, sort of working group that you're contributing to. Um, next uh, panelist, there is a question for us, Deborah. So, Deborah, um, the question for you is, um, uh, we understand that energy audits have great data for spotting energy efficiency investments, and indeed they can help SMEs identify these. But do financial institutions ask for them? I think uh, um, uh, it depends on uh, um, on uh, on uh, the approach of uh, different uh, financial institutions. On our side, uh, we have uh, had uh, systems in which uh, we have uh, various programs uh, going on uh, to incentivize energy efficiency. Some of them uh, pass uh, through. Uh, intermediaries uh, where uh, where uh, where um, uh, we provide uh, um, funding uh, for banks uh, for banks uh, to lend uh, to SME and uh, and also have a specific product uh, that are uh, targeted uh, to energy efficiencies. In uh, in uh, that case, uh, we may have a different approach on uh, how um, how the product should be developed. And what we are uh, developing is actually schemes uh, in which we provide also technical assistance uh, to the banks for uh, developing uh, the right uh, product in terms of uh, supporting energy efficiencies. In that case, uh, we may also have uh, some uh, grant component also for uh, supporting uh, the energy audit. So there are uh, various programs uh, that uh, can be put in place, but uh, uh, learning from uh, my older panelists, I can confirm that many of the things that have been said are quite relevant. The skills part is extremely important and I think um, in the financial sector most of the commercial banks are, some are quite advanced, but most of them are uh, try to learn more on how to treat SME and understand uh, the, the the position of SME and SME's investment and how to treat that. And it's something quite important. It's really the technical capacity and the knowledge and the skills, even at the financial intermediary level, not only at the firm level. And the uh, and, uh, energy audit, uh, uh, they all are ways for learning more, for getting inf more information. Thank you, Deborah. And I know that the EIB has a, an advisory hub that also helps uh, fund uh, firms that want to know more about energy efficiency opportunities. So finally, and, and to close this panel, uh, Vesna, there's a question for you, which is uh, you've shown uh, obviously the clear information in Croatia about how grants can help you get data from buildings. Um, but of course, uh, the, the question supposes there's not enough grant money to renovate all Croatian buildings. So how do you see that data helping financial institutions to move into that space? Um, 
I think that uh, that uh, uh, financial uh, institutions uh, are moving into uh, into that uh, space, and that uh, uh, data will help them uh, prove the uh, soundness of uh, of the investments in uh, energy efficiency. Um, however, I think that in in countries like Croatia, which is actually the the, the similar situation in all countries in in this part of Europe, uh, the transition. Uh, uh, needs to be uh, combined uh, by uh, public uh, public sources and the uh, fi uh, financial institutions, and that moving from grants uh, to uh, to uh, more sustainable uh, uh, financing mechanisms will uh, actually have to combine. Uh, sources from financing institutions, co commercial uh, commercial uh, sources, with public sources uh, uh, for uh, technical assistance, uh, both to finan uh, financial institutions and to benefit beneficiaries and uh, also uh, what I see it at least in in, in, in this immediate period that uh, uh, we will also need to remain uh, but uh, to significantly lower grants and what is also uh, very very important to relate them to the performance uh, performance achieved after uh, after energy renovation so the answer is uh, uh, yeah the data data will uh, uh, help but uh, actually public and uh, private needs to be uh, needs to be combined in this uh, this uh, transition period thank you brilliant vesna well thank you josephine luca deborah uh, vesna thank you for joining us and thank you for your contributions to these working groups of course each of these working groups will have a session tomorrow uh, tomorrow is day two of the plenary um, that will be the members only uh, discussions and i know as a flag to those of you listening um, and also in response to luca your point on on data and the privacy issue there are these wonderful ai machine learning uh, companies now sprouting up across europe who are able to use all kinds of public available uh, available data to give financial institutions some kind of an insight into uh, the properties but of course that's for discussion tomorrow um 